You only need to look at my channel to see that my settings videos for Escape from Tarkov are loved by many. The settings that I use are pretty consistent throughout the wipes, and they've stayed pretty consistent throughout the whole time that I've been making these sorts of videos. However, with 12.11, a few settings options have been added since my last video. And I've also changed a few things since my last video, so in this one, I'm going to package it all up, all the new settings, all of my current settings that I use for the best look and feel of Escape from Tarkov in 12.11. So if this video does help you out, a like's always appreciated, subscribe for future content, I do mainly Tarkov on this channel, as you guys are probably well aware by now. But yeah, let's jump straight into it and talk about the game tab under the main settings menu. Now this is where you can change your in-game username every now and then and you can change the background of your main menu of Escape from Tarkov. A lot of this stuff is completely personal preference. You can choose to always show or auto hide the majority of your UI and you can also change the color of your health color scheme to either monochrome so it becomes black and white and red or polychrome which is green, yellow, orange, red, black. You can mess around with the majority of these settings as like I said it's purely personal preference but the one thing that I would talk to you about is the automatic RAM cleaner. As we all know Escape from Tarkov loves to eat your memory so if you don't have a lot of RAM and I mean like 32 gigs or higher then I recommend turning on automatic RAM cleaner. This will give you a very minor FPS decrease but it will make loading a lot quicker and it will reduce stuttering especially if you've got other programs like Discord and a web browser open in the background. The only other thing that I want to mention is the two sliders at the bottom of this tab, FOV and head bobbing. I have my FOV cranked all the way to the maximum, which a lot of people do do, and that's great because it allows you to see a lot more of your peripheral vision. You can see movement off into your far left or far right without having to actually move your character to look that way, so you'll be able to see a lot more of the world and what's going on around you. Whereas if you have a narrow field of view, you're more tunnel visioned, you're more seeing what's in front of you. You see that slightly bigger, so a lot of people do swear by having a lower FOV, because it does make the hitboxes in this game slightly bigger, but I'd prefer seeing what's going on around me, being able to spot things off in the distance a lot better than I would having a slightly bigger hitbox. Not to mention that 50 FOV makes my head go all funny and makes me feel physically ill. And that goes for head bobbing too. It makes me want to die. I said it before, I'll say it again. I crank this all the way down to the minimum it can be, because any higher than that, and it feels like you're riding a fucking camel through the Sahara Desert, it's just fucking awful. Now moving on to the main bulk of this video and that is the graphics tab. Starting off with your screen resolution, always make sure your screen resolution is your native monitor's resolution and I always choose to play on full screen. Now I used to play on borderless but I found that I weren't having out as often as it warranted being on borderless. So I play on full screen to get that slightly lower input latency. Now overall graphics quality is set to high but it will change to custom as we start changing the settings further down on this tab. And I'm going to briefly go over each setting if you want to know anything in detail and you're not quite sure what each setting means. Ask me in the comments or join my discord and ask me there, I'll be happy to answer any questions. But we have changed our texture quality to high and our shadows quality to ultra. This will really define textures between PMCs. So whereas if you have it on a lower setting, players start to blend in with the backgrounds. This will really define the colors and the different textures so you can see things from further away and just in more detail. Now moving on to our object LOD quality. LOD stands for level of detail, so we've got this cranked all the way up. Again, this will help with textures being set to high. You'll be able to distinguish players against the backdrop. However, it does make shadows a little bit darker by doing this, but we're gonna negate that when we move over to our post effect settings. So whereas usually I used to have my object LOD quality turned all the way down, now I have it turned right up so you can see slight details and differences between textures. We've got our overall visibility set to 2000, this is 2000 meters. No map is bigger than that really, so you can see players walking really far out. Any higher than that, you're just ruining your performance for no real reason. Any lower than that, objects might not render in at far distances, and if you want to see things happening really far ahead of you over an open field, for example, then you're going to want that cranked up so you can see everything that's going on. Our shadow visibility is turned all the way down to 40 and that is simple, shadows become darker the higher this setting is on the slider, so the lower it is the more you'll be able to see a PMC hiding in darker areas. 
Our anti-aliasing is set to TAA high, and that is because Tarkov are constantly improving their anti-aliasing, makes the game run a lot nicer, and our resampling is set to 1 or off. HBAO, SSR and anisotropic filtering are all switched off also, and that is because it doesn't really do much for the visuals of the game, but it impacts massively on performance, so we just switch them off to keep our FPS up. And now a new setting that we will dive into a little bit of detail with is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. This improves your system performance if you have a NVIDIA graphics card. If you do have one, I recommend turning it on and putting it on boost. This will reduce your local system latency up to 38% and that's great because you'll see a visual difference from when you are clicking to fire a shot for example and actually seeing something on screen. I've tested this quite a bit since it was introduced and I'll make a more thoroughly detailed video in the near future on this but you're going to want this turned on. But you'll also notice that it limits and caps your FPS so I'm going to show you a little clip that I recorded on how to uncap the FPS from the normal game limit and you can get as much FPS as possible just from doing this little quick thing while having the video reflex on. While we're here, let's actually talk about NVIDIA Reflex. Ever since it was added, there are two options, as on and on plus boost. Both of these really affect your FPS and limit your FPS to a certain amount. However, there is a way to uncap it while keeping NVIDIA Reflex on, and that's what I'm quickly going to show you how to do today. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your NVIDIA control panel. And once that opens, you're going to want to go to manage 3D settings and then you're going to want to go to program settings and select escape from tarkov.exe under the programs list. Once you've done that you're going to see a list of features you're going to want to scroll all the way down to where it says vertical sync and make sure that is switched to off. Once you've done that simply just come out of this and you'll be good to go into the actual Escape from Tarkov settings now to do a couple more things. One thing I will say as well is make sure your NVIDIA drivers are kept up to date. That's just a thing to help improve your gameplay experience overall, but it'll also make sure that NVIDIA Reflex runs better. Now once you've done that, you're going to want to go into Escape from Tarkov itself, go into the settings, then go to graphic settings, and basically what you're going to want to do is turn VSync off, but to do that you first need to turn NVIDIA Reflex off so you can enable the tick box for VSync, untick that and then just turn NVIDIA Reflex back on with boost and then click save and that is VSync turned off but NVIDIA Reflex still on. And now what you can do is go into the console by pressing the key to the left of the number 1 and then type FPS space 2 and then what you've got here is a FPS counter and it'll say right at the top the FPS limit. You'll notice that there's a limit of 60 inside of a lobby but if we go into a raid you'll see that this limit will change to INF or infinite. And here we go we're just loading into a raid as you can see the limit is currently 60 because we're in a menu or a lobby but when we go into the raid itself our limit will change to infinite and as you can see our FPS is uncapped and it will go up as hard as your computer can carry it. Now moving on to the sharpness slider, usually I have this cranked up to about 1 to 1.1. Now I've got this turned all the way off, because now I realise how sharpness works in Escape from Tarkov and it's not very nice to your system. Basically how sharpness works in game is the sharper it is, it's not increasing the actual texture quality and increasing the texture sharpness like many games do, it actually just piles layer on top of layer of the same texture until it becomes sharper. That's basically increasing the amount that your GPU and CPU has to render and push through your system in order to see it properly. Turning this all the way down to zero will also decrease the amount of graphical bugs and pop in pop out things that you'll see in the distance which will just improve your overall experience. It may look a bit weird at first but you will get used to it I promise. So anything related to sharpness just turn that off. It'll make your game run smoother. If you stream as well on a one PC setup, it'll make your stream look a lot nicer. Just trust me on this one. I've learned 
and now you should too. And now you come to the bottom of the page where you've got the lobby FPS limit and game FPS limit. Make sure your lobby FPS limit is turned all the way to 60 FPS and obviously your game FPS limit is going to be greyed out now because I've showed you how to uncap your FPS using NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. But if you haven't done that or you've got an AMD graphics card for example, make sure you've cranked game FPS limit all the way to 144 FPS as well. It used to be 120 FPS but they've increased the limit to 144. This is great because when you used to uncap your FPS, a lot of systems didn't get much more than 144 FPS anyway. So just cranking this limit all the way up will save you some time and some effort. And the game isn't as optimized as it could be, so you know, for most systems you're not going to get a much more than 144 FPS anyway. Now we've got a bunch of tick boxes at the bottom of this tab. I make sure that all of those are unticked. Noise especially, because it makes the game look gross. But there are two, two little tick boxes that I will go into a little bit more detail with. MIP streaming, you can tick this on if you have a really bad GPU but a really good CPU. It'll push some of the rendering load from your GPU to your CPU, making the game a little bit more balanced. It may affect your FPS just a little bit, but it'll make the game run smoother and there'll be less stutters and crashes if you are experiencing those. And finally, you got the flash indicator. This is purely for NVIDIA Reflex and basically what it'll show is a tiny white box every time you click your mouse or you fire a shot. So you can measure the latency that you're experiencing. I have this turned on, but obviously you don't need to have that on if you don't want to. Now we can move on to post effects, a great tool that was added to the game to counter the use of reshade or NVIDIA filters. Basically they banned reshade and NVIDIA filters because it was giving people an unfair advantage and basically making it so people can see in the dark like it was pure daytime. They've made their own post effects settings to give the people that were using reshade and filters just for an extra bit of colour or saturation a chance to make their game look more colourful. And these are the settings I use for post effects. These actually work really well in dark places because of the colour grading that I have set. But you can also play around with these in RAID. If you go into an offline RAID, you'll see a button at the bottom of the post effects setting saying visualize. You can click that and you can change all the settings for post effects and you can see it changing in real time. So I recommend you doing that. But for brightness, I have it set to zero. It is bright enough. You don't need to turn it up anymore because it will just make the colors look washed out. And I've got the saturation turned up a little bit to 15 and the clarity turned up to 20. You can turn that up higher if it is foggy because clarity does help reduce the look of the fog a little bit and you can see further into the fog. I've got colorfulness set to 80. This gives a lot more color to the game without it going too overbearing like if you were to turn saturation all the way up. I have Luma Sharpen and Adaptive Sharpen turned all the way down and that is because like I said earlier with the sharpness and how sharpness works in this game you don't want any sharpness on the game at all and you can just get used to it and the game will run a lot nicer. Now the main change is the colour grading from my last videos. I used to have Zabid which gave a nice purple hue to the game and it's great when you're working in the outside maps like Customs or Shoreline. but. If you are looking for a great overall color grading option which gives you a brilliant view in the dark, especially if you're playing nighttime interchange or if you're just going into darker areas around the map, you can see a lot clearer with this color grading set to chill wave and it doesn't affect the outside as much as you'd think. Basically what Chill Wave does is it adds a darker tone to the game overall, meaning that the game is overall a little bit darker, but it makes everything look more defined. So you can see inside, it makes players stand out a lot more and objects stand out a lot more and the colors aren't washed out. And outside, it looks perfectly normal. You can see things perfectly fine. So that's why I have Chill Wave set. And of course, you can have a colorblind mode if you want it. And now we can move on to our sound settings. This isn't so much graphic settings, but for a little bonus, I'll mention a couple of things based on the sound settings that you might want to change. In this area now, you can change your character's voice actor on the fly, however much you want. I usually have it set to Michael. I like the default. I like the original. And what I do is I turn the interface volume, not all the way off, but I turn it right down to about 20%. And that is because it turns down the volume of what it sounds like when you're packing a mag or when you're reloading or doing anything inside of an interface like looting a box or something like that. What it doesn't do is reduce the audio of someone else doing that. So it's a lot quieter when you're doing it yourself, allowing you to hear players walking up to you a lot clearer, but you'll be able to hear someone else doing that perfectly fine like you usually would. 
and I also have the music turned off, but that's all personal preference. The only other thing that I recommend you do is turn binaural audio on, and that is basically Steam Audio. It gives a lot better directional audio and it's constantly improving. So make sure you have that ticked, get used to that, get used to the feel of that, and as it improves more, you'll be more comfortable with it. But yeah, those are my settings. They work perfectly well. They're the settings that I'm going to stick with and I hope you guys like them as well. If you are going to use them, let me know what you think of them down below in the comments. And like I said at the start, really trying to push this channel. So if you do like what I do here, a like's always appreciated and subscribe for future content. You're the best. I love you so much. Thank you so much for your support. I do appreciate you. But anyway, have a lovely day. Enjoy Tarkov if you're going to play it. Give your mum a kiss from me and I'll see you later. Have fun.